Hello. Got a new phone, so if this doesn't work, it's because I'm inept. Um, I'm also really tired and I'm really glad it's Friday because it's just been a week. Um, weird thing happened today. Somebody just, well, just now, somebody just phoned me and asked if I could provide a horse for a wedding. That's something I've never been asked before. <sighs> Thinking about it. All right. Can you please tell me, oh, this is from S, by the way. Can you please tell me how you dealt with the weight gain part of your recovery? After suffering more than 20 years from a restrictive eating disorder, I feel physically recovered. So I've got regular periods, acne's disappeared, good digestion, eating to hunger, hunger etc. But my body image is terrible and I'm hiding myself away as I feel so self-conscious about how much weight I've put on and how ugly I feel. Frown face. I will never go back to restricting, I know that, but I keep telling myself that this is just overshoot weight and that I will lose it in time. Feels like mating disorder brain talking. Mm. How can I learn to accept myself at a new high weight? Well, so you've got to kind of, I know this is a really body image and all this stuff is a really emotional subject and you sort of go into a, probably quite an emotional place even thinking about that. But if you can just remove yourself, sit back for a moment and look at the situation and remember that your brain is just this big computer and it basically does what you've taught it. It does what it's learned, it believes what it's learned. And if your brain still believes that there is something wrong with your body after your body is no longer at a suppressed body weight, then you have to look at, well, why does my brain still believe that? So there'll be a number of reasons. There'll be cultural influences, absolutely. You cannot control that we're in a culture that celebrates thinness. Um, there'll be, lots of stuff throughout your own personal history, learn things. There'll be your eating disorder that has contributed massively to that. But you've then got to see that, well, you can actually teach your brain anything and you can rewire anything. And so what you have to do is work out how right now, currently, even though that you, you're you eating, you say, without restriction, and you've gained, you, you've made physical changes, that's a great thing, well done but there must be something that you are still doing that is contributing to the belief that your brain has that there is something wrong with your body when it is not underweight and often what this what this is is um you may be eating more food you may be eating in a less restrictive manner but maybe you're still kind of choosing more diet versions of food. Maybe you're still, you, you might have come a lot further forward in unrestricted eating, but there might be still some ways when if you really look at it and if you're really honest, you can be like, yeah, I'm still kind of making choices that if I imagine my brain just looking at my choices, looking at how I'm acting and observing, I can see why my brain might still come to the conclusion that weight gain is a bad thing. So the question that I'm asking you is, can you look at yourself? Can you observe yourself for a day and be able to pick out things that you do, things that you do, so actions, thoughts that you pay attention to, things that you pay attention to, so mental attention, and can you look at any of those and pick out the ones that you can then say, yeah, that actually is something that might lead my brain to continuing to believe that there's something wrong with my body. So actions is a big one. Anything that's restricted, anything like that is a action that is designed to suppress your body weight, so compulsive exercise, purging, restriction, all of those ones, obviously. If your brain was watching you purge, it's gonna to come to the conclusion that, oh, you must be doing that because you don't wanna gain weight, therefore weight gain's a bad thing. So that contributes to the negative body image. So actions and purging is a really obvious one, but even slight, slight, slight restriction, just kind of going for that lower calorie thing. Like you look at it from your brain's point of view, you're still acting as if weight gain was a bad thing. Otherwise, why would you be letting calories still rule everything? Anyway, so that's an example, but mental attention is also an example. So that's the things that you pay attention to. If you catch yourself that you're still paying attention to comparing your body to other people's bodies, if you're still paying attention to weight, if you're still paying attention to, to calories, that if you can start to control that and notice when you're doing it and be like, boy, stop, I'm not gonna pay attention to this anymore because it's not important, then that will start to lead your brain to thinking that weight and these numbers and, and all of the, and being thin is not important. So where your mental attention goes is really important as well. Rewiring is a big deal. It's, it's really quite, it covers the obvious stuff, but it also covers the unobvious stuff. And what it sounds to me, S, is that 
it's the non-obvious stuff probably. I feel like you're doing your best and you've done your best with the obvious stuff, but there's probably some non-obvious things that are still leading your brain to come to the conclusion that being in the body that you are in is a bad thing. And that's what you need to rewire via paying attention to your thoughts, via paying attention to your actions, certainly. And just tell yourself, I can't do anything in a day that might um, be taken by my brain to mean that weight gain is a bad thing. Because if you're acting as if weight gain is a bad thing, if you're acting as if your unsuppressed body is a bad thing, you said it yourself, you're sort of hoping it's overshoot. Even indulging in that thought pattern, I hope this is overshoot, is acting as if it's a bad thing to be in the body that you're in, because you're hoping it goes away. And you have to be really strong with that one and not allow that thought, just be like, nope, 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 not listening, not listening, not listening, when that thought comes up. Because you have to teach your brain that there is nothing wrong with your body as it is right now. Um, so that, in a six minute video, is uh, pretty much almost all the book that I just wrote on rewiring. Well, it's not really though. But it's a good gist of it. Yeah, so hope that helps, S. If you watch this, it's probably months on since you wrote, so do check in. And thank you also. Um, somebody, a couple of people have emailed me um, because they haven't wanted to comment publicly when I've answered one of their video questions, but they've emailed and checked in and said how they're doing. So I appreciate that as well. It's all an option. I just like to know how people are doing. Anyway, thank fuck it's Friday. Have a good weekend. Bye.